Welcome to EPG Parashala. I am Dr. Vijay Kumar KP, former head, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kerala, Thiruvananthapuram. Today, I will be dealing with a module of the paper, Special Libraries. The title of the module is Library Authority, Leadership and Decision Making Mechanism. And now let us examine what are the objectives of this module. The first objective is to have an overall view of uh, library authorities and library committees. That is the mechanisms through which library authorities exercise their power. The second objective is to have an uh, uh, overview of uh, leadership. What are the nuances involved in leadership and how, uh, what are the uh, steps to become a good leader? etc. The third objective is to highlight uh, the processes that uh, go behind decision making, the significance of uh, decision making process, the steps involved in decision making process and uh, what are the what is the importance of implementing the decisions or the precautions to be taken while implementing the decisions in special libraries. As all of you know, for years, special libraries have been placed under strong pressure to become more cost effective, to deliver results that count for the parent organization. Special libraries have always been proactive. When compared with other types of libraries, they have always been proactive in adopting new technologies and have in introduced innovative services to expand availability independently of time and space. All the changes in the proper direction are controlled by library authorities which are working mostly through library committees. The leadership of these special libraries and the decision making process have a great role in steering the libraries through turbulent times. With this background, let us examine the functioning of library authorities, then the leadership and the decision-making mechanisms in the context of special libraries. As all of you know, the term authority implies power. Power that is derived from office or character or prestige. Every organization needs to establish a system of authority so as to attain its objectives. The purpose of authority is to perform some kind of service by means of administrative process. The authority may be an individual, board of trustees, board of management, executive council at the institutional level. There can be authorities at the state or national level. In the library and information field, the term library authority is more commonly used in the public library scenario. All public library legislations have made provisions for local, regional and state level library authorities. These authorities usually wield power or use power in the areas of financial support, manpower development, introduction of new services, reorganization of the library service and uh, in formulating service conditions of the staff like promotion, status, salary, and service conditions. However, the term library authority is not common as far as academic and special libraries are concerned. But the fact is that there can be authorities in academic libraries and special libraries also. In special libraries, the board of directors on the top or the top level management of the parent body may function as the authority. Sometimes the authority to take decisions about the library may be delegated to an individual like the managing director or the uh, chief executive officer or some other senior level official. Now let us see what are the functions of the library authority. As all of you know, the major functions, there are a empty number of functions, but the major ones are one, giving direction, then controlling, then decision making, then coordination, distribution of rights and responsibilities, 
and motivation of library staff. As I told you, these are not the ones, there are many, but these are the more significant ones. Now let us see what are all the functions of library committees that as I have told, the mechanisms through which library authorities exercise their power. One of the ubiquitous devices, that is devices so common, through which library authorities take or carry out or implement decisions is the committees. In spite of the different terms used to refer them as board, commission, task force, team, work group, their essential nature is similar. A committee is a group of persons to whom as a group some matter is committed. The library committee is needed because the librarian all alone cannot be burdened with all the decision making process in big institutions library, like a library. Say, as all of you know, libraries are becoming uh, big institutions in terms of the three M's, that is men, money and materials. Members of the library committee vary depending upon the type of the library. In the case of a university, the library committee is formed with the heads of the teaching departments or research departments of the university, the vice chancellor, the librarian, etc. The vice chancellor would be the chairman or his nominee would be the chairman of the committee and the librarian would be the member secretary. In the case of a college library, the principal is the chairman and the librarian would be the member secretary. And now let us see the different types of library committee. There are mainly two types of library committees. I have to say mainly two types of library committees. There are many others that we will see, but mainly they can be categorized into two. One is the executive committee. This committee is the most powerful since it has got full power as those matters which are delegated to them by the library authority. So the decision of the executive committee is final and mandatory. And the second one is quite contradictory to the executive committee that is known as the advisory or recommending committee. It simply gives proposals which are subject to the approval of the library authority. As I said, there are many other types of committees. They are one, a due committee, nominated or elected committee, a reporting committee, self-perpetuating committee, etc. Now, let us examine them one by one. A due committee, for example, it has the advantage of independent of politics. It takes decisions expeditiously. A due committees can take decisions expeditiously. This committee is more or less independent. The Madras Public Library Act of 1948 provides the appointment of such a committee. This type of committee sometimes serve the purpose of library authorities too. Then comes the nominated or elected committee. A large committee or an authority nominates or elects a smaller body for looking after certain uh, bodies under it. It delegates certain powers to such smaller bodies or committees, that is an elected committee. Then comes the reporting committee. This committee has sufficient powers to decide the matters that come within its purview. Such decision needs no confirmation from the supreme, supreme authority, but the decision is to be reported to the later, that is the supreme authority for information. That is why it is termed as a reporting committee. Then comes the self-perpetuating committee. These committees have the sole authority and independence as regards the control and management of the library under it. It does not have to report to any other higher body about its activity. To that extent, it is a powerful body. Now, the powers and functions of the library committee. And library committees have got a number of functions. The most important of them are one, the selection of library personnel, 
that decision regarding the policy and aims of the library then creation of rules for the well organization of the library then direction for annual reports then security of library properties and finally other useful works for the development of the library they can deliberate on anything which is uh, uh, which is uh, beneficial for the proper functioning of the library as i have already pointed out the librarian too have his or her responsibilities towards the library committee one the responsibilities of the librarian are one suggestions for policy making apply all the policy and plan created by library committees suggest the selection of library personnel suggest for creating annual budget of library according to the requirements then help in creating annual report then help in controlling the staff activities and the list is endless i have highlighted only a few of the responsibilities of the library librarian towards library committees then let us pass on to the leadership that is the second concept to be dealt with in the context of special libraries leadership is the process by which a person or a group tries to influence the tasks or behaviors of other uh, others towards a required outcome they want a required outcome from a group that is the purpose of leadership according to verick Connies and Coons. This is taken from their well-known book entitled Management. They are of the view that librarianship is the art or process of influencing people, so that they will strive willingly and enthusiastically toward the achievement of group goals. Leaders act to help a group attain objectives. through the maximum application of the capabilities that is the power of leadership the leaders place themselves before the group as they facilitate progress a typical example is the leader of an orchestra and a leader in this controls coordinates the correct tempo of the troupe the performance of the orchestra depends mostly on the quality of the leadership of the director now the ingredients of leadership leadership involves so much of facets and otherwise they are known as the ingredients of leadership they are one the ability to use power effectively and in a responsible manner this is very important as far as leadership is concerned the ability to understand that human beings have different motivating forces at different times and that to at different situations because these motivating forces may vary from time to time and uh, they also depend on the circumstances then the ability to inspire that is very important as far as the leader is concerned then comes the ability to act in a manner that will develop a climate conducive to responding to and arousing motivations and finally the ability to develop a healthy relationship with the boss this is all the more important because the atmosphere has to be one of collaboration rather than collision now the leadership traits leaders should possess certain qualities let us examine what are these qualities a well known authority called uh, stockdill his full name is uh, ralph m stockdill attempted a consolidation of the earlier studies related to leadership ability and he has given certain categories the categories are one physical traits like energy appearance height etc two intelligence and ability traits this needs no explanation and the third category is personality traits this include adaptability of the individual aggressiveness enthusiasm self confidence etc and 
the next one is task related characteristics like the achievement drive of the leader then the persistence the initiative etc and finally the social characteristics the social characteristics involve examples are cooperativeness interpersonal skills administrative ability etc so these are the leadership traits according to stockdale and several other authorities have also uh, put forward some more traits say for example one is drive this includes achievement drive then motivation energy energy ambition initiative and tenacity that is the quality of pursuing something continuously then comes the leadership motivation this includes the aspiration to lead but not to seek power as such that means the leader should not be power hungry but at the same time he should be able to motivate the followers then comes the honesty and integrity self confidence is another quality be possessed by a leader and this includes self confidence includes emotional stability also then the cognitive ability that is the power of understanding the problems and finally understanding of the business what exactly is to be transacted what exactly is to be done what exact decision has to be taken at the appropriate time so these are some of the uh, leadership traits uh, isolated by or put forward by some other authorities now there are various types of leadership styles and the major ones are the bureaucrat otherwise the bureaucratic bureaucratic leader then the democrat that is the democratic style of lead, uh, leadership and the visionary that is the visionary type of leadership and finally the politician here the leaders uh, will act like politicians now let us examine them one by one the bureaucrat that is the first category is generally pleasant and of mild temperament they are cautious in their approach and rely more on structure and uh, management procedures they strictly adhere to procedures they focus on facts rules and rationale the bureaucrat can be authoritarian based on their position this is it is important to note a bureaucrat can be and very often be uh, authoritarian in their approach the democrat on the other hand operates within the organization as if it is a family they concentrate more on people issues sometimes at the cost of the strategic issues this is quite contradictory to the bureaucrat they communicate their feelings and seek to understand the feelings of others needs and thoughts that means they have more empathy these people that is the democrats depend more on their personal characteristics to get things done they may use their charisma to get things done the next category is visionary visionary type of leaders inspire others through symbols and personal charisma they too make use of charisma they are generally energetic enthusiastic and creative they act as facilitators and catalysts by focusing on the vision and values so they have more emphasis on the vision the goals to be achieved they emphasize they lay more emphasis on the achievement of these goals or vision they influence others through persuasion that is their hallmark and finally uh, the fourth category that is the politician type these type of leaders spend much of their time negotiating resolving conflict building coalitions and networks with stakeholders this this is what we see in politicians or this is what we expect in politicians and that is why such leaders are called as politician type of leaders they occasionally make contact with the staff 
asking how they are getting on. They very well support the strategic initiatives of the employees. This is one of their qualities. They always support the strategic initiatives. But they dispense with or ignore or avoid non-performers. The politician leaders are innovative and use a mixture of coercion or a reward. In management parlance, that is, they make use of the carrot and stick method for getting things done. Now, in the modern context, there is need for transformational leadership. Let us examine what is transformational leadership. This is the knowledge age. The expectation of a, in this knowledge age, the expectation of a leader is much larger and complex. Leadership is the knowledge age is of a transformational nature. The connected and intelligent world. As all of you know, this is the connected and intelligent world. And this requires a far-sighted and transformational approach from the leaders. Transformational leadership entails proactive, visionary, entrepreneurial and risk-taking people as leaders. Now let us see what are the steps that can be adopted in order to become great library leaders or what librarian sh what qualities should librarian assume in order to evolve as good leaders or great leaders the first one is collaborative mindset the second one is team development third one is tech savvy they have to be tech savvy and fourthly globally focused and culturally attuned and five future facing let us see what each stands for let us see collaborative mindset first modern times need leaders who have a collaborative mindset that means who can work comfortably in a networked environment with cooperation and with cooperation with competitors that means you have to uh, 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 cooperate with competitors too in certain circumstances and the leaders have to deal across cultures and navigate complex markets. Complex markets have become the order of the day and you should be able to survive and you should be able to exercise, um, wield a collaborative mindset in order to survive in such an environment. Then comes the team development. The leader has to be a team developer. Younger generations consider work as an integral part of their lives. They want career guidance, they want relevant training, they want learning opportunities, and they also want to be part of the community. A leader with a collaborative um, uh, mindset spends time on building approval are building rapport with the followers and they also trust them. Focusing on the individual will be the key to retaining employees in the modern context. Now, the third quality, as we have already seen, is tech savvy. The new leader needs to be versant in the technology of the newest generations of the workers. That means you have to be conversant with all the modern developments in the field of technology. Then only you can survive as a leader. Social media tools invite transparency, inclusion and instant communication to address changing market situations. Beyond being digitally confident, leaders must seek new means of revolutionizing their company, their organizations technical proficiency. The fourth quality, as we have already seen, is globally focused and culturally attuned. Let us see what this means. As institutions become more global, they are exposed to how the economic policies and governance strategies of countries affect other nations. Now, we are living in a global environment where countries are very much interrelated to each other. Leaders need to be competent at working with foreign governments too. Since their employees will be working with people 
from different cultures they will need to leverage the unique skills of all unique skills of all and create cohesion among them that means you have to develop uh, uh, people globally in order to render service at the global level and finally let us see what is meant by future facing scanning the marketplace environmental scanning as uh, perhaps you might be aware is an, an important part of management nowadays scanning the marketplace identifying the trends and building new skill sets will ensure long term viability and sustainability competitiveness requires innovation a culture of ongoing invention and creative thinking and multiple horizon thinking i want to emphasize competitiveness in the modern world requires innovation invention and creative thinking leaders who can take collaboration to a new level in building their teams and who can use the digital tools to their greatest effect will direct their organizations into a dynamic future this is what is meant by a future facing now there are a number of steps which can be used uh, to become great leaders we have already seen some of the steps then another authority on the area bray casiano who was the director of libraries of el paso public library united states has presented 10 steps for the allies professionals to emerge as great library leaders these are highly useful and that is why i have uh, taken them i am going to present them here step 1 is find a good mentor at the same time be a good mentor this is very important in the modern circumstances you have to adopt mentors to uh, uh, develop yourself into a full fledged professional at the same time you also turn out to be a good mentor for your followers then the second step is learn how to follow first say for example if you want to uh, want your followers to obey you to follow you then you have to learn how to follow first you have to set an example by following your leader and the third quality or the third step is you have to be a visionary as i have already pointed out then step 4 be a good servant assume that you are there for the service of the institution rather than the institution is for you therefore you have to try your level best to be a good servant then only your followers will also obey you and then take risks if you want to be an um, a leader you should be ready to take risks then the next one is take care of yourself say if you want to remain as a leader you have to uh, concentrate on your personal growth as well as professional growth this is what is meant by take care of yourself you have to pay attention to your own growth also while looking after the growth or development of your followers and the step 7 is maintain a positive attitude this is all the more important as far as leader is concerned a positive maintain, maintaining a positive attitudes uh, toward everything that is very much important then never turn down a leadership position whether the position that is offered to you is small or big never shy away from that you have to take up the challenge that is how you can emerge as forceful leaders or effective leaders and the next step is learn how to motivate people effectively all i have always stressed the impact of motivation on leadership the uh, the true leader or the true leadership depends upon your ability to motivate your followers and the last step that is step number 10 is keep your sense of humor always maintain equanimity balance of mind and for that purpose you have to maintain your humor also okay these are the 10 steps um, that have been um, adopted by bray casiano now let us pass on to the nuances of decision making as i have already stressed in the beginning these are all interrelated library authority then 
the leadership and decision making these are all interrelated decision making is an important management process that we all know because without decisions nothing could be planned or accomplished nothing could be done decision making is defined as a course of action from among alternatives that is the selection of the most appropriate alternatives that is what is meant by decision making most managers consider decision making as their central part of their job because they have to consistently choose what is to be done who is to do when to do why to do how to do and so on and most managers are concerned with taking decisions about these aspects decision making as uh, all of us know is at the core of the planning process now let us examine what are all or what is involved in the decision making uh, process though the contents are the same different authors have aired different views while describing the process of decision making while some have come up with four stages some others have proposed five stages in the decision making process while a few others have suggested eight stages but the steps are more or less the same now let us see what are all the four steps involved some authors um, have uh, reduced it to four levels the four levels on one premising identifying alternatives evaluating alternatives in the terms of the goal sort and choosing an alternative that is the actual actually making a decision premising involves you know uh, uh, getting all the related data about the problem uh, to be solved or on which a decision has to be taken that is what is meant by premising then you have to explore the various options before you that is identifying uh, the different alternatives and then you have to evaluate alternatives for their efficiency which one is more ideal to achieve your goal that is the third step that is evaluating alternatives in terms of the goal sort and finally choosing an alternative and that is uh, making a decision now these four steps some of some others have elaborated into eight steps as i told you earlier the steps involved are more or less the same now let us see what are all the eight steps first the first step is the internal and external environment in which the decision is to take place is monitored that means then the problem the essential details and who are involved are investigated and defined and these two are clubbed into one in the earlier thing in the earlier four step model that we have seen that is premising then the third step here is additional data is gathered you explore the possibilities or the various options before you and the fourth one alternative solutions to the problem are generated and then the fifth step is alternatives are evaluated according to anticipated outcomes okay that we have already seen in the second and third options earlier then the one solution which is found to be more ideal is chosen and it is further split up here that is authorization has to be obtained for the chosen solution for the selected solution before its implementation that means they, you have to get approval from the higher ups before you uh, go to implement it that is taken as a separate step here that is how it has become eight steps and the final one as we have already seen is the selection of the ultimate uh, uh, decision or uh, adoption of the ultimate decision here the results are then evaluated through monitoring and reviewing the outcome and at the decision making process has to begin again if the results are found to be ineffective suppose you have adopted one option and if you find that while analyzing it if you find that there is something wrong with that then you have to start the process again so that's how the four steps are elaborated into eight steps in the second model let us examine the various decision making styles there are different types of styles but the more prominent among them are four 
they are one directive style two analytical style then conceptual style and finally behavioral style now let us uh, examine them one by one the directive style here managers with a directive style are efficient and logical but they have a low tolerance level for ambiguity they won't tolerate if something is not clear they want clarity in taking decisions they are autocratic they have agreed to power and they maintain tight control something like bureaucrats that we have seen something uh, uh, closer to the bureaucratic style of leaders they take decisions quickly even with little information uh, that because they want to uh, take expeditious, expeditious decisions and even without uh, much information at their hand they may jump into conclusions or they take decisions and internal factors are considered but decisions will be of short range they are not very keen on going for all the uh, alternatives so here the directive style of decision making is something characteristic of the uh, what you call the bureaucratic style of leaders then comes the second one that is the analytical style compared to directive managers analytical managers have a greater tolerance for ambiguity even if things are not clear they will um, exhibit tolerance their decisions are based on careful analysis of the situations and they will carefully patiently go for various options unlike the directive style managers naturally they consider more alternatives in decision making they are able to cope with new situations and they always strive for maximum output now the conceptual style conceptual style managers have broader outlook they are visionaries they are achievement oriented and therefore consider many alternatives they are patient enough to go into the details they value commitments and integrity and are creative in finding solutions they always welcome creative suggestions their focus is mainly in long range issues and are future oriented this is quite contradictory to the earlier style that we have seen then comes the last one that is uh, behavioral style something closer to the politician style of leaders this category is more concerned with the organization and is genuinely interested in the development of the people they communicate easily and show empathy this i have already highlighted while discussing the political uh, politician type of leaders they tend to be persuasive they will uh, try to enforce or they will persuade people to get things done their focus is short or medium range they are not so keen as getting long range outcomes just like the conceptual style and these type of leader that is behavioral style people use limited data and depend more on people for decision making just like politicians they will be swayed by the opinions expressed by the followers uh, instead of depending so much on uh, rational data they may try to uh, have inputs from the people and take decisions based on the majority that is behavioral style now let us see what is meant by participative decision making which is more ideal in the changed scenario one of the emerging trends in decision making is participatory that is enlisting the cooperation of all a behavior leader is more likely to promote participative decision making than a directive leader an open organization is more likely to encourage participative management than a bureaucratic set up knowledge ability and interest vary among individuals and groups organizational constraints and the object of decision making may, uh, may prevent group from decision making participative decision making 
is highly useful for resolving differences among group members because the decisions are very often taken with, uh, um, uh, with the collaboration of a larger number of people rather than one or two individuals. If individuals are included in decision making, the outcomes are likely to be better because you will be getting different views from different groups and you can arrive at a decision which is more acceptable to all and this is the characteristic of um, uh, participative decision making. In the special library context, the stakeholders, stakeholders means all those involved in the setup are likely to develop an increased awareness of the information services offered from the library through participative decision making. Participative decision making gives an opportunity for the creative people, those who are with innovative ideas to come up with new and unusual ideas which may lead to exceptionally brilliant decisions. This is the, uh, 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 this is the advantages or this is the single most advantage of participatory decision making. Participatory decision making also leads to brainstorming and brainstorming as all of us know enhances the possibility of using innovation and invention. Invention pertains to the development or discovery of something new. Innovation on the other hand is the enhancement, adaptation and commercialization of new products, services or processes. In a special library environment there is much scope for uh, adaptation of commer and commercialization of new products and services especially uh, with the help of the information technology services which are available. In the fast changing information scenario, buttressed by or supported by information and communication technology, there is tremendous scope for the use of creativity, invention and innovation in decision making of the special library environment. Now, what are all the steps or what are all the precautions to be taken in taking decisions in the context of libraries, especially special libraries? Decision makers in the special libraries operate in a complex and sometimes uncertain environment. Therefore, sometimes the decisions have to be taken based on the intuition or what is perceived to be facts. Suppose you are not having all the relevant facts with you, you have to go very much by the intuition of the leaders. Some of the decisions may involve emotions also. This is quite likely. While arriving at decisions, emotions play a major role. It is important for information service managers to be aware that decision making is an emotional process. Very often it is linked with the emotions of leaders as well as the followers. Feelings of self-worth, biases and experiences affect the emotional processing of decision making. Special librarians have to take cognizance or they have to understand this fact. Emotions also play a role in diagnosing and defining a problem in selecting acceptable solutions and the implementation of the solutions for solving the problems. And this aspect has to be very well accepted in the library scenario. A person's position in the information service may influence the emotional importance attached to decision making. The value of the decision and its outcome may differ at varying levels within the same information service and its parent organization. Just to cite an example, a decision that is taken regarding solving a troublesome issue at the work unit level may appear to be insignificant as far as the chief librarian or the chief executive officer is concerned. On the contrary, some of the decisions, even if they are small decisions taken at one level may lead to far-reaching consequences at a later point of time. These points are to be borne in mind while taking decisions in libraries. Then let us try to sum up what we have already seen. 
special libraries are viewed as integral parts of their parent organization's information rich infrastructure they are considered to be part and parcel of every parent organization for enabling the special libraries to function more effectively in the digital environment especially library authorities of the special libraries their leadership and the resultant decision making process called for a transformational approach this is what i have been stressing all through authority implies power and this power is derived from office or character or prestige when the term authority is used in managerial settings it usually refers to the power of position though the role of a library li the role of library authorities is well defined in the case of public libraries especially through the public library legislations it is not so in the case of special libraries as we have already seen however the roles and responsibilities are more or less the same in spite of the differences in the composition of the various library authorities leadership is the art or process of influencing a group influencing uh, uh, a group of people so that they contribute willingly and enthusiastically i stress it has to be uh, the you have to enlist their cooperation so that they contribute willingly and enthusiastically towards the achievement of group goals leadership demands followership as i have already pointed out earlier you have to be a good follower if you want to be a good leader this is true and you have to command respect from your followers there are various approaches to the, to the study of leadership according to one approach leaders are classified into three autocratic democratic and participate uh, or participative and free reign so they are autocratic democratic or participative and free reign leaders and another classification that we have already seen is bureaucrat the democrat the visionary and the politicians we have already discussed in detail the characteristic features of each of each category leadership issues in libraries are very important when deployment to icts is to be considered you have to be scrupulous in taking decisions as to the adoption of icts in the library environment before the commencement of the proposed changes the top and middle managers in the library system especially should be made to see the need for change you have to take a decision whether it is actually needed where is uh, 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 whether there is any need for such a change and the need to adapt and also the need to learn all these things have to be um, emphasized they have to be taken into consideration while going for a change in um, uh, uh, decision making decision making as we have already seen is the selection of a course of action from among choices or alternatives creativity that is the ability and power to develop new ideas is important in decision making therefore there is a tremendous scope for participative decision making the role of creativity in participatory decision making has already been highlighted here creative individuals can make a great contribution to the organization invention that is the development of discovery of something new and innovation that is the enhancement adaptation of new products or services or processes also play a major role in decision making in the changing environment so i am emphasizing three points creativity invention and innovation these are all the hallmarks while taking appropriate decisions in the modern context this i have already highlighted you can see a number of references and you can uh, have the references from the course material that is available to you, to you all i hope you have some got some basic ideas about what library authority is how they implement 
their decisions through library committees, the characteristic features of uh, leadership and the importance of decision making and the steps in decision making etc. through this module. Thank you all and goodbye.